another way is to use symmetric ciphers. So you can use, for example, DES, DES, or AES. Both of them are symmetric. Those are all, both of those are, those are secret key encryption schemes. So you can use that, and um, and you use that in a cipher block chaining mode, which means that you take the cipher block and then chain it to the next line, next block, and next block, and next block. This is your message. This is your message, and this is the first, um, basically, block of the message. You encrypt it, you get the output, you feed it to the next one, and so, so the last one is your hash. That's it. So when you want to send the hash, you don't send the whole thing, you just send the last one. So this is called Data Authentication Algorithm, DAA. And um, this is basically DES with CDC, cipher block chaining. And DES is right here. This is this will take um, uh, a 56-bit key and 64-bit message, 64-bit block, and produce 64-bit output. So the final hash would be 64-bit long. Now, you don't have to, by the way, Okay, that's another point I forgot to mention. That you this is, you can, don't have to use the all 64 bit. You could say I want to have a 16 bit hash, and you could just take the first 16 bits, and that would be a hash as well. But not only the less than 64 would be weak, or even 64 bit is not very strong I mean, because it will take only 2 raised to 32 attempts to break it. So this is not something that you will use, but this is a possibility. There is a clear um, break in this security is that if you just have one block in the message, just one block, so there's no chaining. If there's no chaining, then your hash will be equal to k and x. This is x is your message and k is the key and so whatever is the encryption of k, encryption of x with key k is your hash. Now if somebody modifies this message x to x concatenated with x plus t, x followed by x plus t. So let's see what is that. That is a two block message. The first block is x. The second block is x plus t. t is this thing. So what will happen? You take x plus t and the t comes from here. You add that. What will you get after exclusive r? What will you get? When you exclusive r, x plus t with t, I send a one block message x but somebody made a two block message out of it. The first block is x, the second block is x plus t. Now the receiver is trying to check out the hash. So they run the x and they get a t here and then they feed the t back here So, and then they add it to x plus t. You get x, exactly. So here you get x, so what do you get here? t, right? So now what has happened is now we have a two block message which has the same hash as the one block message. The sender sent a one block message and the receiver received a two block message with the same hash. And it's very trivial. All the, the attacker has to do is to exclusive or the hash with the message and append it. So this is not good and we need to fix it. And so the fix is called Actually, there are two ways to fix it, which will come up later on. But let's first introduce CMAC. So basically, I mean, CMAC is one of the fix, which was proposed by these two guys, Black and Rogaway. They fixed that problem that we talked about by using three keys. They said instead of just one key that we had here, use three different keys. And so you use a key here, then you use another key here at the end, K1, and then when you if the message is uh, integer multiple of the block size. So if there's no padding, then you use K1. If there is a padding, then you use K2. So there are three, th three keys, K, K1, and K2. If you do that, then nobody can play with the, with the block, la, la, with adding by, by adding one block. Then somebody else came up and said, no, 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 you don't need three keys. You can generate the other two keys from one key. So you can just use one key and then, you know, do something with that key to get K1 and K2. And so that is what was adopted by NIST and, and that is called CMAC. CMAC is the NIST standard SP800-38B and in that standard basically what you do is you derive two n-bit keys 
from a k bit encryption key to n bit keys from a k bit encryption key so to get that what you do is you first generate l which is the encryption of k with zero n zeros basically zero raised to n means you write down zero n times so you encrypt the key k so now you get some random number l then you multiply it with x in galois field 2 raised to n using this polynomial so all of you should now know how to do multiplication in galois field 2 raised to n there are two choices i mean basically of galois fields either you use galois field with prime numbers in which case you don't need the polynomial life is much easier and that is good for um, software implementation another one is galois field in two powers of two in which you need the polynomial and this is good for hardware implementation so here they are using galois field 2 raised to n with this polynomial and all you are doing is taking this l as a polynomial multiplying it by x that is your first key taking the second polynomial multiplying by x square that is your second key now when you multiply generally nothing will happen except it will be shift left and shift um, multiply by x yeah you just all the powers will go up by one except that there might be an overflow right if, if it becomes l raised to x raised to 64 then you have to subtract this quantity similarly if you are using 128 bit then you, you use this polynomial and then so only if the, if the last bit becomes if the most significant bit becomes one then you have to subtract this quantity for cmag if you have to do cmag you have to derive two new keys k1 and k2 using this galois field multiplication from k and depending upon whether you did um, have to pad or not you use k1 or k2 only one of the two and whatever you get at the end you take whatever number of bits you need to get your mac or hash is that so this, this is t length most significant t length so that is the length of your hash you don't have to take all 160 bits or 128 bit or 64 bit you could take whatever number you need from the front it turns out the more you go towards the front more random the bits are not all bits are equally random bits at the other end are much more predictable so you always take it from the front most significant bits t length and so this is c max so now we have we will learn about two different max h mac and c mac so the next issue is what if we want to encrypt in addition to integrity we also want to get confid confidentiality so so far in the max we send the message in the clear and only thing we sent was this mac now we want to encrypt the message also so there are four possibilities so take the message hash it and connect the two cut, concatenate the two and then encrypt it or you could do the instead of hash you could do um, mac with one key and encryption with the other key or you could encrypt it with one key and do mac with other key but when you do the mac you take the cipher text so this will be encrypt then mac our fourth method is that you encrypt and mac in parallel so you are doing the cipher text here and you are doing the hash here these are two different keys and you can do that in parallel the cipher text is not used here so all of these have advantages and disadvantages and different um, solutions have taken different ones for example SSL and PLS which are used on the web they use this one IPsec uses that one SSH uses that one all of these have little bit of some problems and so NIST suggested two algorithms called CCM and GCM to fix those problems CCM is counter with cipher block chaining and this is used in Wi-Fi and the way it works is that you take a counter this is your counter so this is a counter mode like we used before you encrypt the counter and then you exclusive arc with the message to get the cipher text and the only thing is that this is your message to the message you add something to this is your message is p1 through pm is your message and you add to it the tag that you calculated before so the way you calculate the tag is that you take your plain text 
and you put something in front of it and then you run the whole thing to the MAC algorithm with the key and you get the tag. Okay, so what do you put in front of it? In front of it, you put a random number, nonce, no, nonce means not used again. And so that is a random number you put and then you put some associated data, something else that you want to protect. So for example, even though the source address is going in clear, you want to make sure nobody else modifies it, so you put it inside the packet as well. So you might have something more than the message. So this is associated data means some other fields in the packet that you want to protect, right? So you put all those things, and then you break it down into the blocks and run the CMAC with a key and you get the tag. That tag is used here. You use AES encryption algorithm, so this is AES. You use CTR mode of operation, this is CTR right here and you use CMAC authentication, which is right here, CMAC. And a single key is used, the same key is used here and here for both encryption and MAC. And two passes, the only problem with this algorithm is that you have to go make two passes over the plain text, one for the MAC and then one for the encryption. And this is basically, if you have to go back to the previous four possibilities, can anybody guess what sequence is this? So there were MAC and, and encryption, M and E, right? So which one is first? MAC is first, because if you don't do tag, you cannot put it here, right? So this will be M, then E, so MTE. The next one is GCM. This is another one of the standards. The advantage is this is parallelizable. Here you could not parallelize it because you, things are, these counters are related and, and um, so on and so forth. So, this is parallelizable, and you use two functions. One is called g hash, and one is called gctr. This is the g hash, g hash function, and this is the gctr function. So this is very similar to g hash is very similar to you know, CBC kind of thing. You take your message, you take a key, and you run through H. Whatever you get, you take to the next block, and then next block, and next block, and um, and at the end you get by m that is your hash. And g hash is actually this. When I say you have to hash it, that's actually a multiplication with the key in Galois field two raised to one twenty eight. And so there is a polynomial which I have not put here, but there is a one twenty eight power polynomial that you will need to do this multiplication. And that will give just the hash. And um, and if you don't want to do the encryption, you don't have to do the second part. You can just do the hash and you're done. So then what you do is, for the message, you take your message and you take some initial value and then you generate the, generate, um, you use the key to generate the encryption and you can, exclude you are your message to get these values. At the end, you take the most significant bit of the last um, block to which you add x star n, and we'll talk about that in a minute. This is your x n minus one, this is x star n, and that gives you y star n. So this is, um, y star n is basically the function of the whole thing, initial value, initial uh, value and, and then you have all these xn's to xn star. Um, the key is to confuse, I have whited out here. In the book, it says y1, y2, y3, yn. And then in the bottom it says y1, y2, y3, yn. And they have nothing to do with each other. Right? So again, I have problems with the symbols throughout this book. And this is one of the problems. You can't use in one figure, same symbol for two different meanings. So in this figure, if you look in the book, there is some text here which I have deleted. So basically YM I have left because there is no YM in the bottom. But basically, so that's it. The y, y is on the top and Y in the bottom are totally different. This is the result of the AES encryption. This is the result of this multiplication. So let's summarize this GCM method. In GCM method, we use a Galois field multiplication to get the hash. 
and we use this um, almost like a counter mode AES encryption to encrypt and let's see the only detail I have not put here and somehow I forgot to put it on this slide is XN star and XN star basically <coughs> has to do with um, what to do with the last block if it is partial then how do you do the padding so the details are not here but you have to send both YM and YN star all right so now that finishes the two two authenticated encryption algorithms so let's let me summarize again first we talked about two different Macs one was called HMAC then other one was called CMAC then we said well in addition to Mac what if you want to have confidentiality then there are four methods and therefore the NIST specified two standard methods and they are called CCM and GCM. CCM as you can see uh, uses um, basically creates a hash and then puts it into a counter mode encryption and GCM uses a hash which is based upon um, Galois field and puts uh, basically parallel in parallel so it doesn't really put it in one to the other. So that finishes that part now we are in the whole last part of this whole chapter last section of this chapter and this is well, how do you generate random numbers and that should be trivial by now we have generated so many random numbers that using hash and max is not a very big deal all you need to do is get a seed value and then you run through the hash keep running through the hash and you keep getting the random numbers or keep running through the max keep getting the random numbers so all you need to do is seed, seed value and seed must be known only as needed so as long as people don't know the seed they can't generate the same random sequence and they cannot decrypt, encrypt or do anything with that thing, right? So the PRNG can be based upon the encryption algorithm, can be based upon the hash function, can be based upon the MAC and every, you know, all of these are exactly same. And for the hash function you take any value and get the output. Now the, your, your one possibility could have been that you can feed back the same output input and get the new value and new value or another one is that you just keep changing the i by 1. So you have some value of b and then b plus 1, b plus 2 and then you keep getting a new number. With a Mac similar possibilities exist. You take a v value and then you feed it back or you could also have done with plus but somehow the standard specifies that you do this cipher block chaining kind of thing. So that brings us to the end of this chapter message authentication code and here are the six key points first is authentication means integrity and source authentication encryption is not part of it encryption is just you can do with or without encryption so that's totally orthogonal decision authentication simply means that the message has not been modified and that the source is correct Double public key encryption can be used but it is complex and therefore we don't use that at all. We use hashing with a secret key. This is called a keyed hash. HMAC is a procedure, general procedure which you can use with any function. So we now know that HMAC is alone itself is not really meaningful. You have to say I am using HMAC with MD5 or I am using HMAC with AES. HMAC is just a structure. Fourth point is that DAA was not secure because anybody could make one, two block messages for any given one block message. You give me a one block message with a MAC and I can create two block messages by exclusive adding the MAC with the message and it will have the same MAC. Right, so that is trivial to break and therefore they fixed it using CMAC. And then if you want to do encryption in addition to authentication then you have two choices CCM and GCM. CCM uses CMAC and a counter mode and GCM uses multiplication and a counter mode. Then you want to do pseudo random number generation there are two methods either you can increase the counter and keep hashing it or you can feed back the cipher value and keep hashing it. Now the homework is kind of trivial homework you just have to see which method is used in CCM and GCM. I already told you the answer for CCM so now the next thing is what is for GCM so you have at least half of the things to think about.